how's it going people? I am now at the Air Mobility Command Museum in Dover, Delaware, United States. Right next to Dover Air Force Base. And we're about to go in and tour this incredible free museum which has a many incredible old historic airplanes mostly cargo planes but there are some jets fighter jets so let's check it out this is gonna be great Greetings, people. I'm now at the Air Mobility Command Museum in, near Dover Air Force Base in Dover, Delaware. Let's check it out. This is going to be great. With my friend Deb, this is going to be a blast. They had one specifically for Antarctica. Yeah. Yeah. Some nice looking metals. Mm. Oh, yeah. You have to serve for 30 calendar days in the Antarctic in order to get it. Hmm. We have now entered into this hangar. The only plane we can get on is the C-47 and we have to have a tour guide in order to Oh, okay. Wow. Pretty incredible. This is a B-17G Flying Fortress. The four engine heavy bomber developed in the 1930s. Some big tires. There's a pretty historic looking rescue helicopter. HH-43B Husky acquired in November of 1958 Wow I have a giant wing in my face. <laughs> Tail gunner. Together. The B-17 is virtually non-heated 
and not pressurized. Ooh. We used oxygen masks and electrically heated flying suits. At bombing altitude, the temperature was about 40 degrees below zero. Wow. Crew members were in their positions immediately after takeoff until just before landing. From our base in England to the area of Berlin, Germany and back was 8 hours and 40 minutes flight time. As a tail gunner, I was in a kneeling position with a small seat under my butt. Our, on our sixth mission, our plane exploded and our entire crew were prisoners of war for more than one year. Yeah. Pretty impressive museum. <clears throat> oh, there it is. What do these aircraft markings mean? Air, First Air Division. High visibility. Serial number. Radio call letter, huh? It's pretty interesting. Because he had to crawl in there. I know. And then sit there with just his head sticking. Right. Sperry Ball Turret. Wow. How'd you like to have that job? <clears throat> There's another gun sticking out here. Oh my God. That's tight. <laughs> it is very tight. Jeez. Oh. And then you could get shot out easily because mm -hmm. you're in this bubble sticking out of the plane. Wow, look at this. <clears throat> this is unbelievable. V-17 bomb load. Capable of carrying a wide variety of bombs. Wow. And here they are. Bombs away. Dover Air Force Base timeline. 1940. And here we have the airlift and refueling during the Vietnam War display. Welcome to Vietnam. POWs. Air refueling. I always wondered that how they did that. And here we have a map of South Vietnam and Cambodia. 
and North Vietnam. Mm, looks like some actual artifacts. Here we have an M1A1 75 millimeter howitzer. Wow. Wouldn't want to be at the tail end of that thing. D-Day, Operation Neptune, the longest day. Wow, C-47A, Skytrain. Nickname, Goonie Bird. Wow, Goonie. <laughs> Sixty first Troop Carrier Squadron in Saltby, England, April nineteen forty four. And this one above me is a B-13 Valiant. The Valiant was the basic trainer most widely used by the U.S. Army. Air Force during World War II. Pretty cool. Oh, interlocking planks that they use for runway, create runways. That's interesting. Air Transport Command. I love those bomber jackets. <laughs> They're always too small for me when I get used to go to the, uh, Sav uh, no, the uh, what do you call that place? Is 
they pretty much had to build everything themselves runways there you have some rations on display it's what's for dinner this is how the army air force air corps eats and over here I have a nice cockpit T-38 cockpit familiarization trainer. <clears throat> Danger. This airplane contains ejection seats. Uh, that would be fun. There's your trainer. Wow. And over here, a flight simulator. And another one, a link trainer. Pretty awesome museum, open to the public, free of charge to get in. And there's that trainer plane, the K-11, another shot of it. <laughs> My dad was as tall as I was, and I don't know how he got in here. And wow, yeah. Times, but he probably did. He had to learn how to log here. I got one spot here to stand up right here. <laughs> I, yeah. This is where I do my presentation from. I get right in here. Yeah. Like, All right, now I can talk to you guys. <laughs> this is a ball. This is great. I love this. You go up there, when you look in the sun inside the cockpit, on the left hand side, you'll see the buoys I was talking about. Okay. Wow. Now in the cockpit. Boy, this is tight. Wow. Oh my God. That's a tight little squeeze in there. Here we have some baby shoes. Look at all those controls. Pretty darn interesting. It's amazing what these guys went through. Escape hatch. Looks like the uh, radar or radio radar controller or navigator and the radio <coughs> command radio set. Wow. 
because I said there's only one place I can stand up, and I'm standing there now. So. This is where you sit. Uh, yeah, seats, and then that's uh, set up like a paramedic. Before you jump out? Yes. Or you hook up. Where's your hook up? Uh, down here. Oh, there it is. Wow. Wow, that's great. Yeah, I guess in World War II, people parachuted into that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This door right here. Right. Not that. Not that. <laughs> and these guys had so much stuff, cargo. They had 100 pounds additional, what you see out there. And it was on both sides because they had a, a, a parachute here and a parachute in the back. So they had to put it down the sides. Oh, and when they, walked, when they got to the door, they, they wouldn't fit out. Oh, so they, the first two or three, they had to push them out. Literally push them out. And then they wow. realized that if they turned sideways, they could go out sideways because the long part was this way. Right. So they were going out sideways and just died out sideways. Wow. So it happened to me at airborne school, I got pushed at. <laughs> I want, yeah, they didn't want shot coming up through and shooting them in the butt or mm. not, you know, mm. or anything else. So they would sit on their helmets. But here, this was that. And I, and I don't, I don't know why it was metal, maybe for easy cleaning. Mm. Hmm. Who knows, you know. Maybe it was easier to construct. And that probably been. Well, it's lightweight too, again. It's lightweight, but, but we have, most of our present day ones have a canvas or uh, like lawn webbing. chairs, webbing. Webbing. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. They're much lighter. Made of um, aluminum. But uh, this is what we're in. And this is, I've seen pictures of it on D-Day, and this is this is what's there. Hmm. Uh, is those, is those, I think the pictures out here, in fact, there's some pictures of them sitting in, in the aircraft and, and this, the, the metal seats. And the lavatory. Wow, the lavatory. Oh yep. That day it wasn't being used. That this door was stored in there. Because, as I said to them, I said, you're sitting there with 100 pounds of stuff strapped to you, there's no way you want to go back. And it's only a 35-minute, right. 40-minute minute flight to hmm. the St. Mary's. Place. So if you haven't gone to the bathroom, you're not going. And the pilot's flying, he's not going. And, and I'm... And, Tech Sergeant Woods. Yeah. You sank. Mm -hmm. You're out. So, yep, it was. But yeah, that was. Uh, D Day. Pretty incredible. Yep. All right, we are now outside at the Air, Air Mobility and Command Museum. There's so much to see here, I don't even know where to start. Might as well start out getting inside of that. Uh, can we get in that B-52? We can get in the 141B and 130E. Pretty incredible. <clears throat> you gotta see what this is. This is an F10, F101B Voodoo. Here we have a VC-9C, transported America's top leadership from 1975 to 2011. First I thought that was Air Force One, an old Air Force One, kind of looks like it. Very similar, transporting leadership. C-141A, built 
by Lockheed. First jet engine military transport was introduced to replace the slower propeller driven C-124 C-133. Wow, first jet engine transport. There they are, the turbines. So my father worked on an F, the radar for the F4 Phantom, which they don't have one here, but this one is very similar. F106A, very similar to an F4 Phantom fighter jet. Used for many years. And here we have here we have a C-141B Starlifter. Nineteen seventy-three television audience has watched the C-141 bring on POWs released by Hanoi. Military Airlift Command. All right, we are now going on this <clears throat> airplane. And over that way is Dover Air Force Base. As you can see, the B-52 is parked over there. Maybe we can get a closer side of that later. All right, let's go on in. Oh my God. Another transport plane for uh, people parachuting. jump out that plane you don't know you're we're coming back you know and here is <clears throat> the cockpit welcome aboard wow Another pretty big transport cargo plane for parachutists, airborne. Pretty incredible. Team Pope, Rodeo 98. It's an old propeller plane with some spikes on the propellers. We're guessing to keep birds away. It's a good idea. Pope, AMC Pope. <clears throat> it's another military airlift command. And parked over there beyond the uh, barbed wire fences. Yeah, too big to park it in here. KC 10A extender. Early. 1970s evidence, KC-134. 
Strata tanker had limited operational capabilities and was unable to maintain the of the U.S. Air Force. So then came the KC-10A extender, McDonnell Douglas. That's pretty big. Well, there are so many other old propeller transport planes here that it's just too many to film every individual one. So I'm just doing a big panoramic shot of these. Older propeller planes, they're very interesting. Very historic looking. But we are on our way you can see it off in the distance there to the behemoth monster plane that dwarfs everything else here oh there's a big one there and there are some big planes here <clears throat> all of these are propellers This is a great museum in Dover, Delaware, and it's, it is free of charge to get in, so I highly recommend it. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we are not finding a B-29 here. Uh, I was looking for that one in particular because my uncle, Colonel Ryan, Colonel John Ryan, flew missions in that. He was a pilot in the in World War II over in Japan, but this one is very similar to a B-29. It looks like they're working on it. But that's incredible looking. KB-50J. Super Fortress. Okay, it says Originally a B-50 Super Fortress bomber aircraft, V-50 started life as an upgraded model to the B-29 Super Fortress. So there it is. That's basically an upgraded B-29. Wow. Looks like they are working to restore this. But actually, this gives us a really good glimpse before they restore of the engines my goodness these were propeller plane I forgot that this is before jet engines and the B-29 the Enola Gay was the one that dropped the atomic bomb over Hiroshima and Nagasaki so hail to my uncle who flew them, Colonel John Ryan, who is no longer with us. And he told me some stories, man. He told me some stories. And here's the back end of it. Looks like they're working on it, but I'm so glad they have one. And we have made it to this behemoth, gigantic, cargo plane that dwarfs all the other ones. <clears throat> C5A Galaxy. Wow, made by Lockheed. The most notable fe design feature of Lockheed C5 is this immense size and here we have an LGM 30 Minuteman missile wow but I have just been informed that we're now going inside this gigantic cargo plane the biggest one the Air Force has
So what you serve is a not a scale model of the Wright Brothers uh, plane. So that the Wright Brothers flew their aircraft in 1903 down North Carolina, Kitty Hawk. Their first flight was 120 feet long. Like big achievement for 1903. The length of our cargo hold is 121 feet long. So our cargo hold is longer than Wright Brothers' first flight in 1903. Oh my God. Um, just to give you an idea of capacity. Uh, so first of all, point out, the C-5 is typically not used to carry troops. It's to carry cargo vehicles. It can carry troops. It has carried troops in the past, but it typically does not carry people in the cargo department. But what could you fit in here? Um, six forty pound buses could you fit in here. Um, remember the old uh, Volkswagen Beetles? Yeah, yeah. a hundred of them could park, be parked inside the uh, cargo bay of the, the C five. And I think we usually tell the kids I think twenty seven million ping pong balls. <laughs> now I mentioned that uh, it's typically not used to carry uh, people in the cargo department. However, there is a personnel compartment in the C five. So above you is a cargo, a passenger compartment with seating for about 70 feet. Airline style seats, you see a picture of it. So that ladder, with the blue ladder will come down, that's how you access the uh, passenger compartment, the C5. It goes up to about, where it kind of flashes out right there. Yeah. And this is what it looks like. The fuel, um, six and a half train tanker, cars of fuel to fuel this aircraft. It does have the uh, capability to be refueled in flight, so its range is pretty much a lot So I mentioned just a, just a couple of very photos of helicopters. We fold the, fold the uh, rotors down, we'll fit in here, I think five black wow. helicopters. Incredible. Um, I mentioned that Dover Air Force Base flies C-17 and C-5 out of Dover today. They fly the M version. This is the A version. So this is the plane that was used from the late 60s. Uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure when this one is actually retired. But the M version, all computers, they call it a black copy. And the post. Yep. <laughs> so when you're when you're uh, we're talking about moving material, a lot of it calls the term moving pallets. So this is a typical workforce pallet. And it, each pallet can hold up to 10 pounds of material. Crap. If it's too heavy in the front, it's not going to end well either. So um, now it's all done by iPads and computers to load this aircraft. And so a lot of the numbers uh, along the inside of the fuselage are to help for the loading of the aircraft itself. Volume. Just the way those things. The feasibility of the air mobile ICBO concept wants to turn. I know my couple of my houses would turn. Over 82 yards in length. It's on parachutes. Wow. Stabilization just is separated from the metal, and we're coming up on a burn. Coming up on a burn. Hey, wow. we've got ignition, ignition, and oh, that's how they do it. They never, by this time in the program, system they never the But that aircraft you see there is this very Yeah, gigantic. In the words of Mission Control, initial deployment was smooth with a good package extraction. And a clean release on the extraction tube. We've got full inflation on the tubes and the missile cradle package is moving on out. Everything smoked. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. Huge. You could live in here. <laughs> there it is, the cruise missile. That is a pretty big missile. Amazing. Here's the C5 outboard wing section cutaway. Wow. So 
lot going on in there for a wing. So that was an interesting video of them launching this Miniman missile right out of the back of the plane. And here we have yet another missile. Wow. Falcon air to air missile. And this bizarre, funky looking cutaway of this aircraft. Operation Varsity. Assault across the Rhine. First of varsity was the airborne invasion of Germany across the Rhine River in March 24, 1945. Wow. Oh, that's a glider. Glider infantry. Wow. There's some Jeeps in there. Pretty old Jeeps from the 40s. That's great. CG4A. The silent partner to be powered aircraft. Delivered many equipment, vehicles, weapons, supplies directly to the front lines. All right, hope y'all enjoyed our tour of this incredible air mobility museum in Dover, Delaware. And thanks for watching my channel. And take care y'all, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you later.